mine. A must win for Team Quebec. The two tallest competitors in this event. Could easily be played on a basketball court, and I'm not sure who'd win that. But Martin Degg just wins the leg. And the race to five. Martin will be looking to put things right because he wasn't in a good frame of mind after losing the last match with his partner, Alain Martel. So he's got to get straight in his head. Singles play is always a little different. Big chance, and this can be an illegal break. Three balls have to pass the head string, including a ball pocketed. Well, as a matter of fact, that five looks like it just got by the head string, so it is a legal break. I take that back. Both players had a look. So Martin will look at this two balls. Outside chance of a 2-8 combination here. Not easy. I'm back, James. And neither is the safety. Welcome back, oh, Thank you. Were you talking to yourself there for a while? I'm constantly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop. <laughs> it's the only person I can find that'll yeah. listen. I agree with you. <laughs> well, I just mentioned he's looking at a 2 8 combination here, and he's just had a second look at it. These players are all aggressively minded. That's the way you pursue nine ball. You try and park your opponent in his chair. He wants to think about this a little, a little longer. It's a Moscone Cup format. You've got scotch doubles play. You've got singles play. Eleven match wins required to secure victory. Well, this will work. This is going to finish, yep. This will work. And our referee, Farlo Samanovic, now required to get that magic rack off the table and did that pretty nicely. So Eric's going to be kicking at this. Ooh, just caught it thin, almost made it. Martin has been one of the mainstays of the upper echelon of pool in Quebec for years, hasn't he, Ross? Absolutely, and, and, and you know, a, a figure, a constant figure on the Canadian scene as well. And played all these guys before. I mean, they're no stranger to each other and, and playing each other. So. And right perfectly behind the seven to get shape on the three. He's got to be careful not to start overthinking his stuff and just let himself flow. Let that nice, fluid movement come out. Interesting conversation with Alex in between the break, uh, Patty Line, about the chemistry between the teams. Uh, I think that's so very important. Well, he noted that Martin Dag and Alain Martel kind of disagreed on yeah. how to go after a lot of shots, and that was one of the reasons that he thought they struggled. Yeah. And that wasn't Martin's best positional effort right there. No. He knew where he wanted to get, and it just missed it by like a quarter ball. He touched that five. Well, here's a shot at that side pocket that he missed earlier in the, in, in the team play, so he gets redemption oh, here. He made it this time. That's perfect. Now he's right back into position. Well, maybe not. It might be a little thin, eh? No, I'll play this on the side. Yeah. He's going to spin it off the top rail. Right, he, got, he got on that good. Now he just has to judge his draw. Bring it back where he is almost. 
Oh, too far. Too far. Yeah, he's he's left this where I guess it's fair to say it is missable. You wouldn't expect him to miss it, but but he left that a good foot and a half further further away than he should have. Uh, wow. Yeah. See the movement, Russ? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nerves. He wasn't confident with it at all. He didn't like where he left it. What a gift, though, for yeah. Eric Corlifson. And remember, it was Martin Degg that broke that uh, opening rack. Just a bad, you know, just a bad opening for him. And not, he's an emotional guy at the best of times. So, bad position to get on the five. Ends up with a good shot off there. Puts himself right back into position that he's able to spin it off the top rail. Get perfect on the eight. And he looks like he just struck the cue ball too low, got into it just too much, and pulled it 18 inches past the, the, the middle pocket and left himself a far longer cut than he should have. I think a lot of players have, have struggled with uh, the speed of the table. It's a new cloth that was put on this beautiful black round table. Put here by Canada Billiard, one of the sponsors of the events. Michel Lemire has been such a great, he great guy. He's been behind for, the sport yeah. in Canada forever, yeah. as long as I've been involved with Q Sports in Canada. Michel is a staunch advocate of all Q Sport disciplines. And Absolutely. And he's a big boxing fan as well. But well, whenever I go see him, he talks to me about boxing. He loves, he loves all boxing. sports, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, this is a legal break. One down. Eric would like to have seen that one, one stand ball on the table. Going to the head spin, three balls down. <laughs> one, two, three, three balls down. <laughs> so you didn't even need to get to the head string. Safety coming up. <laughs> Got to be a little careful here. Yeah. In contacting that too can't really play this at the speed that he might like because if he hits the wrong side of that two, that two could feather off the seven and go into the corner pocket. So he wants to keep that cue ball on the table. But again, right now he's fighting himself a little yes, bit, he isn't is. he, Russ? Yeah, you can see it. The look on his face. Kept the cue ball on the table. That was one of the and he made it. And one of the things it. I was concerned with. Nobody's cheering for the fluke that just happened. That's a sign, I think. Yeah. Alex would have been yelling and screaming now, saying, "That's exactly what we planned." <laughs> He's uh, he has fun at the table. Yes, Mark Ten right now is. That's, uh, right. That's right. He's not really enjoying himself. No. See, look at this. He's short again. He's short again. The the Alex equivalent on Team Quebec is Luke Salva. Luke For sure. has a good time. Mm -hmm. Short again. Not bad though, Russ. I'm sorry? Not too bad. No, not bad, not bad. But I mean, you're still back cutting. It's not the perfect straight that he wanted. Now it is. You can just slide this, it'll be fine. Well, he needed it to be easy. Yeah, I'm not sure. Why. Couldn't he have played it into the opposite pocket? Could he have not stopped to the opposite pocket? I mean, you know better than me. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you needed that. And the crowd urging him on as well. Well, they've traded punches. And that time, it's Dag that repays the favor and secures the rack against the break. But it was a big fluke, fair to say. 
no, he threw caution to the wind the way that he played that kick shot and worked out in his favor. Referee secures the rack, and it will be the grind of the grinder to break. Not the original Cliff Thorburn grinder. Is there, is there any truth? that it was Alex Higgins who gave him that name? It wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely possible. One ball down, one ball past the head string, so it's an illegal break. Martin Degg knew it. And Eric just eluding to the illegal break because he's perfect on the two. Oh. Oh. Well... That was nothing more than careless. Like just total yeah. can you know what? Just because shots are easy, you've got to give them their that's right. Their due attention. That was pure and simple carelessness from her. And you know what? He's got far too much experience to do that. Yeah. To have that as an excuse. That was well played. That was well well played. He had to get by that four to get onto that three, and he did it perfectly. Well, he's getting his chance back, so. This is as if he would have broken, so he's got to take advantage of this. That was a poor shot. Yeah, he finished too straight out, didn't he? I mean, he knows the fives at the opposite end of the table. The last thing he wanted was to be pretty straight on this four. Now he's going to have to force this. Good spin on the ball, and he gets by. He gets by the seven. Sometimes the ball start running nice for you. Instead of clipping the seven, he rolled by it. Well, Eric had his chance. Yes, he did. The stamp is authority on this match. And a very bad miss on the two. Martin now wants to burn that into his memory bank. Just a little short. That's a little short, yeah. Of ideal position. One, one rotation more would have been perfect. Or one rotation less. something Martin has had to dig and find himself and if this is any indication I'd say it's mission accomplished because all of a sudden there's a look of focus and determination that wasn't there at the outset. No it was not and when you think about it you know he should, if he gets this he should really be three frames three frames up they were all at his all for him to take. Well, some distracted him. <laughs> Someone in the background waving the Quebec flag. And 2-1 is confirmed here. <laughs> and the overall score, I've already mentioned 4-1 in favor of Ontario. So this is, this is a big vital, match, yeah. big match for Team Quebec. They'd love to win this one.
There, Corlifson will stay out. He'll partner John Mora against Luke Salvis and Nicholas Charette. That'll be a doubles match following this singles match. We haven't got to see Luke in action yet, have we? The machine gun. No. Yeah, he's... I always like... I like seeing Luke off the table, and I on love the, seeing him on, on the, the table. table. Yeah. Well put, James. Well put. You think, you think Eric's still kicking himself over that easy miss? Well, but he's also, again, got as much experience as anybody here. So yeah. he knows he's got to put all those negative thoughts out of his mind. Sometimes easier said than done. But I did sense a bit of venom in the break. <laughs> oh. So there's the balls rolling funny before when they were perfect. And now congestion towards the one. I'll tell you what's tough is when you've got a ball over a pocket like this, where do you push, push to? to yeah. Yeah. That was a mistake, huge mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there was no reason for Martin to get out of his chair to look at that. That wasn't what he wanted to do. But the ball's over the pocket. I mean, if you read this angle right, it's not it's it's not an impossible shot for somebody of uh, of Eric's caliber to kick at this and make contact with the one. It's near enough the pocket. It's near enough the ball. He's kind of the master of his own demise there, isn't he? Yeah, a little bit. Back to back. I'm looking for problems and I don't see any. Mm -mm. Depends on where he finishes, if, if he creates his own problem. Depends on where he finishes on the two. If the, if the six doesn't get in the way to come back up for the three, it should be okay. Then there should be no problems. And that's what he's that, thinking about. That was almost dangerous. He almost found the seven yeah, moving yeah, the cue yeah. ball. Snooker players take much more care when doing that because of every shot being a, a foul, whereas nine ball players, you know, they often play cue ball foul only. Now, is the six a problem here, James? This is for you to tell me. Is the six is the six in the way? That's yeah, well, what I was the, thinking. The good news is he can just bump this bump off it. the cushion and yeah. give himself an angle on the three because he's got to get the opposite end of the table for the four anyway. Oh, Whoop. oh and foul the nine. Double foul and foul. Now, what do they do with the nine? Do they leave it there? Because now he's... Qu'est-ce qui arrive dans ça? C'est ça qu'on est en train de demander. Oui, c'est ça. Qui juste a dit ça? Ils remettent pas la neuf. I guess they don't put it back then, do they? No, it's just a foul. That's probably a loophole in the rules there. Well, especially a foul of that nature. Yeah. Because that was almost like a deliberate foul. Almost deliberate, yeah, exactly. And and what if what if you really had pushed the ball into a really more precarious position than it was originally in? You can't miss that too like that, and that's that's just not happening. You cannot miss the two ball like that. Yeah, of the two, they've both had their moments of yeah, ineptitude, really, but one of them seems in better control of their emotion. Yeah. And that, that could be the difference. But I think this is hanging over from the team play earlier. I think, I think a lot of that's hanging over.
you ball tracking mm -hmm. up towards that corner. Just raised a yeah. few eyebrows, but no danger in the end. 2-2. Two -two. Confirmed here from Labanda Coin. In St. Lambert, beautiful suburb of Montreal. There's, there's some shots that look easy, and you miss them. We, we saw earlier when Ben Crawley has to try to force the three. He ended up fluking it in the wrong corner, but he missed it in the corner he was playing at because he put so much siding on the ball and tried to force it through. And that's sometimes yep. understandable. But that two from, Al, from Martin Day really was just a center ball hit coming off the cushion. There was no, no siding on that, no reason to. You know, some runs very similar to Eric Smith. It was just, yeah, he, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, he yeah. took the shot for granted was thinking about the cue ball. Uh, uh, uh. I forgot to make the two. Yeah. Eric had a dead end two, and he was just thinking about where he wanted to leave the cue ball. Didn't give the shot the due respect that it was owed. And again, I remember Steve Davis always telling me, and well, not always telling me, but telling me that we were having breakfast in Bangkok. It was a tournament in Thailand. And, uh, nice little snooker. It was snooker. snooker. And, and um, he just said, you know, in, in Sucker, he says, you can be very successful. Just stop missing easy balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, the easy ones are the ones that beat you because they don't. They, they not only hurt your confidence, but they boost your opponents. Yeah. Well, yeah, this was a nice break from Martin Dag. Well, that's what we talk about unforced errors, right? That's the and in nine ball, like. It literally, like you can think, the world-class players, as soon as they can see a ball, we almost readily assume this is supposed to be out. You're in a match over 15 frames, you know, guy makes two mistakes and it costs him the match. That's how it, there's, there's so few and far between the difference between the top players. There's, you can't afford to miss those unforced errors of straight-in shots. Uh, not at this level. This looks good. Beautiful this shot. This looks very good. Not bad. He's hurrying. Players have to play within a 30 second time clock, or shot clock. Each player allowed one extension per rack. Look where the ball is, and he can reach it. He can reach it without even the extension on his cue. That should be a rake shot for anybody else. That didn't hurt him, that little touch no, that on the seven. Him. He groaned when he made the shot, knowing he had hit it harder than he wanted to. Which I guess could happen when you're stretching. And he's queuing over two balls. He yeah. might be able to get his hand in between. He can. Yeah. Acute and again. Yeah, just the wrong side. Yeah. Taking him away from the six. And now he's got to play this at a little bit of pace and some spin on it to bring himself around. Oh, that's a lovely shot, sir. That's a lovely shot. He's playing bottom on this one. Beautiful. Now he's getting his confidence back now a little because that was a a little bit of a flare shot. Well, this isn't ideal. No, it's not. But you know what? This is the type of shot that if Martin makes it, confidence it, level. It'll help. <laughs> it'll help. And if he misses it. Hey, little duck. <laughs> and he made it. Stayed still. 
stayed nice contrary, and still on that. Contrary to the one that he missed when he jumped up. Yeah. But again, you know, he he took that flare shot on the on 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 the was it on the seven ball? And did he have to come up that way off of the rail that way, or could he have just followed through and come back up naturally for the for the shot in the side? Yeah. Like did the natural line. Yeah, seem it, like, like you said though, Russ. I think he you know he wanted to hit it with a bit of speed and uh, you know, let that cue arm go a, go little, a little bit. Maybe a a sign that he's feeling a little better. Okay. Well, Eric's going to need a good break. Do you think it means something? Do you think it's a sign when in Martin's corner, the only one sitting, the only teammate sitting there is Luke Salvas, and on the Ontario team, all four players that aren't playing are sat in Corlison's corner. Is that, a, is that a sign of something, James? No. I mean, it's funny you say that. I used to make mention of that fact at the Moscone Cup year in and year out because the Americans, same thing, Europeans were all there to support their their teammate and the American side more times than not you couldn't find them. No well, successful break from Eric. You no, know, I can't say that I'm I'd be happy with that. You know, if I'm Mark if I'm Danny Hewitt, he's the team captain. He's not even there to support his guy. Yeah, I'm kinda having captain. a look around Me to see too. if I see Danny uh, anywhere and I don't. He's, he's right here. He's standing on this corner behind this pillar right here. I mean, the body language says everything if you're not near your, your guy, you know. Especially somebody like Martin Day. I, I think he's the, yeah, I think he's the type of player that if he could go back after, High five you know, something a little questionable. But, but just he More needs that little bit of, yes, Martin, well yeah, played. You, you can do it. Stay focused. You absolutely. know, all the sort of things that you would tell a student. Yeah. Because in fairness, Rush, you never stop learning. No. And, and, and let's face it, for all of us, any, any athlete always needs that little ego stroke. You know, they need to be, all right, way to go. Especially job. these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah pool is all about self-belief. Just snuck out. That was Alex. Was the sort of out. support that you talk yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Well, you might get lucky here. Well, it's close. You might be able to see that too. I don't know if he sees it. That's close. It. Yeah. Very close. He kind of shook his head. Well, the way he's getting down, I think he can. Settling back in, I think a little for him. And now he's 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 he's, he's concerned. Now his stroke is there. He's making the balls. Yeah, he's shooting with confidence now, isn't he? Well, I guess Steve Davis is right. You boost your other, <laughs> you boost your opponent's confidence when you miss easy shots. He should be able to just freeze this there, I think. Yeah, stunned it over. Did he get the right line?
Has he found that rhythm that you're looking for? Right? Yeah, you know something, when you see a player speed up, too, that's almost a, a sign they're feeling mm -hmm. it. They feel a lot better. I guess that means Luke feels good all the time, doesn't it? Colleague of mine and good friend of yours, too, Jerry Forsyth, used to always right. say, think long, think wrong. wrong. Yeah, that's right. Think wrong. Brings a score to 4-2. Martin Dag in control now of the singles match. Nico, Nicola Charette is at the bar. Danny Hewitt is back here. They turned the back. Nicola Charette turned his back, you know, on the win. He'll get something to drink. And, you know, the guy just had a, is coming back like he's struggling with his own demons. And he's, he's coming back. And you want that support, I think, you know. Uh, Maybe the Ontario guys just don't have anything better to do. <laughs> That's cold, <called>, James. <laughs> Rack number seven. And the former Falcon Tour winner here in Quebec will settle in. And he's hoping this will be his last break of the match. You can see the caliber of player that he's. That last frame showed the caliber of player that he is. He can make calls. And when he gets that little giddy up in his step, he lost the cue ball. Mm. He lost it. He, he shrugged his shoulders there, but that's his loss on this. Although, can he cut that? Well, I'm looking right at it. And he can make this. Yes, he can. But, but I think he called the push right away before looking at it. Can he take back his push call? He can't, right? Yeah, that's a good question. But you know something? There's no value in being able to go after it anyway. He can't come off the rail and make his way back up, can he? I can't see Eric taking this. Can he see this? I guess he can. I love you. That's what I It's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's Oui, c'est bien. Oh. Without the kiss, it's perfect. I mean, still good, but... Il y a un dans le micro. Playing this on three cushions, Ross, trying to get behind one of these colors near where we're sat. This looks good if it's hard enough. Oh, oh, he's he's got the kiss. The six. Yeah. Well, good news, bad news. Mais la table est pas he's facile, hein? No, it's not facile. It's difficult. He's left a shot at the one, but position's not easy. Is the eight in the way? No, because he would draw this. If the draw two was right. available to the bottom left corner, I'd, I'm pretty sure it's not. Martin, I'll just draw over to the right-hand side of the table. Can he play for the two-nine combo? Can he get to that side of it, or he's not can't see enough of the two? Yeah. Oh, he hit that sweet, didn't he? Well, he no prizes for sweet. guessing where Eric's going to be playing his next shot from. Right behind the four. He could even go with the nine, but might as well just glue him behind the four. I think you're going to be right again, Mr. Reich. I think you're going to be right hey, again, Mr. Reich. You a smart guy, you. <laughs> And this is the rack that Martin needs to secure the point for Team Quebec. And I'll tell you what, this is a tough hit. Very tough yeah. hit. Big sigh from Eric Harlison. Oh, no. 
Yeah, it could be the beginning and the end for Eric's run in this match. And you know what? You really got to tip your hat to Martin Day. Yeah. He had a couple anxious moments, a couple bad misses, but he's held himself together. And I think a deserving winner. There's no reason why he shouldn't take this one home. Yeah. I am, I am not a fan with the way he played that no, shot. No, no, no. Very thin. Let the cue ball run away. He's got deep screw on this. And he's overhit it. Oh, this the nine came to kind of rescue him. Otherwise, he'd have been overhit and hugging that rail. Just wants to get the cue ball over to the right-hand side of the table as we look. Leave himself a shot at the six. Oh, yeah. Wow. Could you have finished worse? Couldn't very thin cut here. Worst. Very thin cut. Take the cue ball up All behind the eight. the eight ball, yeah. Oh, oh missed oh, no. it all together. Well, that was a bit too thin. Yeah, just a tad, yeah. I'll tell you, everything was in the open. He had ball yeah, in yeah, hand. Yeah, ball in hand to start. And that's the one that screwed it up, was the ball in hand. Where he placed the ball in hand was the, was the mistake. And now there is nobody in the Quebec corner but himself. <laughs> He's sitting there all by himself on this one. Now, if this was the old format of winter breaks, this could be disastrous. Uh, well, let's get this tall. Leaning over the nine. Well, Russ, I thought we were going to be having yeah. a coffee waiting for the next oh, match. I agree. Got more, a little bit more yeah. battery power left in this one yet. 4-3, Martin. Had, Martin had the break. Martin had ball in hand. Well, this is one. If Martin Digg goes down and loses this match, He's not happy. He's sitting. He's he's not happy, and rightfully so. I mean, you can't be happy with that. Après ce match-là, on va avoir le match Eric Olivson. On a un match en équipe. Eric Olivson, Jean de Mora contre Nicolas Charette et, et Luc Salva. Salva. Ça va être notre premier égard à, à Salva. Oui, oui, oui. oui. Puis euh, c'est à 14 heures. Four three, as I said, Martin just in front. Well, it's going to be a good break. Mm -hmm. And does he have a shot at the two? He I don't not. think so. He does not. Neither player has been too fortunate off the break, really, have they, no. Russ? No. There hasn't been a lot of flow. And it, it seems like the cue ball seems to be propelling itself forward somehow. I'm not sure if it's getting kicked into this side of the table or they're hitting it that way, but the, a lot of the cue balls sometimes are not. It's not finishing in the center the way it should, and it seems to be coming towards the bottom of the table here, or top of the table, depending on which way you're looking at it.
Got to be careful. He's looking where to push. Again, it's a tricky shot to push, isn't it? You don't want to push into an area where you, you know you're going to get it back and it's real tough. You just want to be able to push into an area where an attacking safety can't be played, an aggressive safety. He's looking at the kick here, off the side cushion. And if he's thinking this long, you've got to believe he's going to give it back, and he did. Yeah. Well, so, what did Eric have in mind? Can he get to that edge, or is he come having to hit it from behind? If he can get to the edge of it, he's going to send the two up here. Oh, he has to spin it, so... No, you got no. it. You got it. Oh, well, there you, you believe go. that? Oh, you, you know, believe you that? Go. And he left the two right over the side. Would have been clear sailing from our ten dig. Yeah. Instead, instead, it's almost a guaranteed out for for Horlison. Wow. Martin look into the heavens. There'll be no help there. No, no, no. It's a thin cut. Yeah, but he's got to come all the way back around anyway, so it's okay. Perfect. Oh, that kicked. You saw that? Kick? Yeah. It kicked mm -hmm. It's not having the cue ball clean, though. Do you think the kick is from the dirt? My feeling is it's, yeah, just chalk. The cue ball picking up some chalk off the table. And the point of contact between cue ball and so object ball. You have to hit so perfectly to get a kick because of, of the chalk. A little thinner, but half ball cut. There it is. Well, this is a big rack, this final one. And Martin Daig will break. It's a big rack, is it, James, when it's 4-4? Four, four? It's, it's, it's a big rack, is it? <laughs> in a race to it's five. a big rack in the <laughs> overall <laughs> score. Yes, I'll tell yes, you. I yes, mean, yes, you're yes, looking at is. either 5-1 or 4-2. Yes, indeed. So this rack, you may want to mark this one down if you're keeping score at home. Pivotal. And you, you have to have gotten out from where, you have to have been able to close from where Martin was. Yeah, the, the previous rack for sure. I mean, you, nothing you can do. You can't legislate for the, the luck that Eric Horvath no, 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 got no, the last rack. But the rack table. before, Martin, Eric should never got back to the table. The match should have been over. Yeah. He'd have been, a, he'd have been a, what, a 4-2 four, four winner? It would have been, that's a, correct. 5-2 winner. 5-2 five two. Five two in the overall score, 4-2. Four 5-2 two. Two and a winner, and now you're on the hill at 4-4. Four four. It so? doesn't take much for the tide to turn in, in this game, boy. And fast. <laughs> well, how about a nine ball off the break? I'm sure, I'm sure he'd love it. I'm sure Martin would love it. We closed out day one with a 5-4 that favored Team Ontario. Ah, no. Look at this. Nothing didn't down. Ball, and didn't an illegal break as well. Yeah. But here, now here, this is where I see the advantage. Like, uh, it, it's almost hypocritical. Now he can see the edge of this, but let's say he'd have been behind the five. It's almost hypocritical to even have this so-called illegal break because in a worst case scenario, you have no advantage. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, it's, 
It's very true, Russ. Very true. What a shot Horlifson just just came up with there. Yeah. Somehow found the cue ball, weaved it through all the traffic, and ended up being perfect. Now he's going to play the combination, combination. three onto the seven. Now he has to make sure the three stays up because he has a possibility of not seeing the four. And he did stay up. If he can draw this out above the eight and get straight on the four, got to be careful. I think he's okay. See again, yeah. what I like when I, when I see from Eric right now is he's playing at a good speed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's instinctive. All those hours of practice. This is where they pay off. I think he overscrewed that more than he wanted to. He got really into it. Yeah, he's not real thrilled with that one. He's going to have to draw this back. He'd love to be straight on the 8. That'd be a stop shot for the 9. He's going to pull this back. He's got to control this properly. Yeah, he got some that work is to not do. Perfect. And even the crowd sense it. Yeah. This is not straightforward. Mm -mm. No, it's quite crooked, actually. <laughs> now, is he trying a two-way shot here? Is he going after the nine at the same time? No. But, oh, wow. Well. Oh, he's okay. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty that good. That perfect. It's dead into the middle. Dead into the middle. And that's what he didn't do on the first miss that he had at the opening. What a shot and what a match. Eric Carlson snatching victory from the jaws of Absolutely. defeat. And all of a sudden, it's 5 1, Team Ontario. Nous, on vous revient dans une dizaine de minutes. Parfait, Guy.